Hi. Um, first of all, thank you f uh, to James for allowing me to demonstrate this um, and doing a little bit of a showcase. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm a bit shy at doing these things, so my face is not on it just yet. Um, so what is this device? It's a power unit that I'm going to fit into, eventually fit into a uh, MG, uh, little MGF vehicle. Um, and this would produce on paper around about 100 horsepower and weighs about 60 odd kilograms. So I'm looking to get rid of the engine out of the uh, MGF, the one that decided to um, blow itself to pieces, and it wasn't very pretty basically, it's K-series engine. Um, so get rid of that engine, take the end block off of it um, and use that as the mounting plate to um, mount to the existing gearbox. So this will go into the MGF and mount to the existing gearbox so you could actually drive it like a normal car. So um, I designed this to do um, 0 to 7000 RPM um, so you've got the full range and basically drive like a normal car only that the power unit doesn't keep spinning up it slows itself down and, and turns off. Um, so what am I using with this? I'm using uh, eight, uh, okay, uh, 18 kilowatt modules so there's four 18 kilowatt modules here um, in this whole piece here so that's one two three four modules and I'm using radio controlled boat motors which are these devices here and the reason why I'm using these is because they're water fed so they're water cooled uh, so I can take the heat away a lot quicker because three kilowatts is a lot of power um, for uh, to generate and a lot of heat generated as well so they're brushless uh, three-phase motors um, and they are 22 volts I believe they are uh, and the speed controllers for them are over here 200 amps they can uh, supply quite happily so they're over um, capable uh, of these motors so let's just remove that end plate because that's in the way so three motors are facing um, one way and the other three motors are facing the other around this planetary uh, gear system here uh, so you've got three motors driving this one gear and these three motors will be driving in the other direction driving this gear here uh, so it will be driving that main shaft which is a stainless steel shaft or a steel shaft uh, through these nylon 30% uh, glass fill uh, gears um, I've chosen those because they're um, almost the same strength as steel uh, but they've got a bit of give uh, to them as well so they, they'll bounce back so hopefully there's a bit more um, mechanical um, springiness to them effectively so if I get rid of that end plate so you can see the bearing at the end here so that's your bearing um, you've got this plate here that squashes against the collet so instead of cutting get rid of that instead of cutting into the the main shaft and reducing its uh, strength I've gone for a collet system where um, it's tapered inside the gear, hide the gear, um, so it's tapered as you can see there uh, and it will squash down and bite against the gear and the um, shaft hopefully not putting too much pressure on the gear and snap, smack, um, snapping the gear so behind that gear as you can see you've got these little devices that close and open and lock so the, the line between that and that is past that center point so you can lock the motor in position and take the motor off of the main gear as well so every single motor can be taken off of the shaft um, and put back onto it again so it's either driving it or not driving it and hopefully that will be synced to the main gear um, the main gear having 60 teeth so I can work out roughly how many rpm it's doing quite easily um, I think it's 18 teeth and 60 teeth uh, I'm not counting them now but yeah so there's 60 teeth on there and um, what I'll have is uh, fiber optics somewhere don't know where I'm going to have it yet um, feeding back pulses from the teeth so the pulses are come back through a fiber optic cable so via be um, infrared LED one side the other side will be a fiber optic uh, lead and I can tell exactly what the speed is uh, on that 
probably through a Tinsy because Arduino, as as James was saying, they're quite fairly slow, but the Tinsies are a lot quicker. So it'll be reading that and updating the speed of that, and then I can synchronise um, the motor shafts with that, and hopefully have some sort of synchro meshing, um, and it doesn't strip any teeth off with a bit of luck. But we'll see how that goes. Um, so that that will go back on. So uh, if you're doing say 70 miles an hour on the motorway, then um, you could have four motors engaged, have only four speed controllers engaged, uh, and only using four batteries because there's independent speed controllers for each motor. So there's three on this side and three on this side. So for the three motors this side and three motors this side, um, and individual batteries as well. So they uh, will load share. So you'll have a main motor um, that is driving a certain amount of current and the others will follow that current so they'll load you probably through some sort of PID um, uh, process something like that but it'll probably take quite a lot of tuning and you know a, a wide threshold or whatever um, but see if we can work that out later um, so where was I going with that good question yeah so these come off and on and load share so when they're load sharing um, four motors would run probably about 500 watts uh, they wouldn't get too hot you could pump the water in if you needed to through separate pumps um, and then you could rotate so connect another four motors up and disengage these four motors to then uh, allow the other batteries to start draining and the other ones to cool down so if you were doing cruising on the motorway that that would probably be the best way if you wanted loads of power say under 30 miles an hour um, then all the motors will engage um, and sink in and then it will be ready to go as soon as you put your foot down it will they'll all be engaged um, so this is where I'm going with this uh, it'll probably develop a little bit further than that um, but we'll see how it is. But yeah, it will go through the main gearbox and drive like a normal car, hopefully. So we'll see. But my idea is to have a, t a small battery pack um, of about 20 kilos, something like that, that will run you around town and stuff like that. So you you would, uh, I don't know, drive back to the force of work for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes worth of driving. You take the battery pack out, put it on your desk at work, charge it up. And then put it back in your car and then drive home um, at the end of the day and then if you wanted to go on a long journey you would have a huge battery pack um, which is obviously quite costly so you'd have a huge battery pack that you pl plug in uh, you drive to your destination with your little battery pack as well as a bit of a reserve uh, when you get to your destination you can switch over the battery packs from the big battery pack to the small battery pack um, and just drive around town again and then charge your large battery pack slowly over the time that you're wherever you are and then when you're ready to come home you've got your large battery pack to get home and your little reserve battery just in case you need an extra few miles to go to um, uh, charge your your device up um, hopefully the large battery pack will be in a suitcase or something like that or something on wheels so you could move it to your power connection rather than moving the car to a uh, power connection which i think is possibly a problem anyway but yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so thank you very much, and thank you to James Bruton for uh, allowing me to put this on. Oh, and don't forget to visit, if you like, uh, dev255.uk. Um, I'm currently upgrade, updating the site, but hopefully I'll get a lot more content on there as well soon. Right, thank you.